Hi guys and girls, I'm Obsidian Ant. Across the last month I've been using a new throttle and stick setup, the Hotus Warthog. I haven't mentioned it until now because I wanted to get a good feel for the system before I did a video on it and ultimately I've decided to go ahead and do a full review on it. In case you're wondering, this is not a paid promotion. No money or any other incentive has actually changed hands. I appreciate that's not normally the sort of thing that's said in front of reviews but I did want to get it out of the way because I don't normally do hardware reviews on this channel and this is only the second hardware review I've actually done. I've been using a throttle and stick setup pretty much since I started playing Elite. I previously played with a Cytec X55 and from time to time I still use an Xbox pad. But overall I just cannot play Elite Dangerous without a HOTUS. And for my own personal tastes it's actually a mandatory requirement for the game. I know there's a lot of people out there that are thinking about getting the HOTUS or even have one and I know there's a whole bunch of people that wonder what the HOTUS Warthog is actually like. So this is what the video is aimed at. Let's get to it. I spent about two minutes or so on the unboxing here. I don't want to spend too much time on it because I want to get right down to the system's use with the game itself. So the first thing that really struck me when this review box arrived from Thrustmaster was the sheer weight of it. It actually weighs over eight kilos, which is a significant weight, especially when compared to some of the more lightweight joysticks out there. The reason for that is immediately apparent as soon as you get into the box is because the whole thing is made out of metal. The stick here is very very heavy, it feels solid and robust and that feeling even extends to the triggers here. It feels very weighty in the hand and is very good fit for the palm as well. I've actually been using a Cytec X55 for well over a year now and the feel of this is very very different. Both the X52 and the X55 are constructed from plastic. Now the base here is also metal and very very solid, it's where the bulk of the weight is and that stops the stick from moving around the table while you're using it. Now you can also see that the joins here are also metal. I did actually try and look up about the internal components but couldn't find anything solid on that. But as far as I'm aware a lot of the internal switches are actually plastic switches like many of the other joysticks. But I haven't heard any reports about them wearing and in use they don't actually feel as though they would wear any time soon. The throttle is also actually very heavy. Now both the stick and the throttle itself are licensed by from the Air Force as they're replicas of what can be found in the A10C tank buster. I'm not sure where all the weight is in the throttle here but it feels like there's literally a brick inside the base. And that's good because like with the stick it stops it from moving around the table while it's in use. Now not everyone uses their hotter set up on a table so with that in mind both the throttle and stick here do come with holes in the bases that allow you to mount it to whatever surface or area you actually need it to. The feel of the throttle here is quite nice but I've got to admit that this particular part was a little bit disappointing because it does feel a little bit plasticky. There's also some give in the beams there allowing the throttle to pivot left and right and that gives it the impression of weakness although in the last months of use I haven't actually seen any signs that that is actually the case. So how good is it in game then? Let's have a look. As I say I've been using this for around a month now and I've used it in all manner of situations and all manner of ships as well. My first ever HOTA setup was a Cytec X55 and I went to that straight from an Xbox control pad and I've got to admit it was actually very difficult to start learning to control the ship with. I think some people get a stick and they can jump straight in and control the ship with no problems at all but that certainly wasn't the case for me. It took quite a while to learn the controls and get a good feel for it with the ship but over time I got used to it and could handle the ship very very well and significantly better in fact than I can actually, than I can actually handle it with a control pad. Now when I switched over to the Hotus Warthog here it was a very similar learning process again, it felt like going straight back to scratch. And there's two main reasons for that. The first was pretty simple to overcome and that's because of the amount of resistance here on the stick. Concealed away inside it has a very powerful spring and combined with all the metal this gives the stick a very heavy feel both in terms of its physical weight as I've already mentioned as well as a lot of weight and resistance when you're actually trying to move the stick. Now this may not be for everyone and it actually took me quite a while to get used to. But now after a month of this going back to a lighter weight joystick with less resistance does feel 
very very different and it makes the other sticks feel a little bit cheaper and a little bit more plasticky but at the end of the day that's going to be a point that many people are going to feel is very subjective and I could certainly imagine that there'd be a few people out there that will feel this stick is a bit too heavy to use. That said though there's no denying the build quality of this and it does actually feel like using a real stick from a real plane. The main trigger at the front there also is very solid. The rest of the switches on the stick are plastic. I think aside from the little pinky switch at the front, which is also metal. Quite handy because that lever can sometimes take quite a lot of pressure to it. The second problem I had with the stick, and this is one that I haven't really overcome still, is the lack of yaw on it. With some other sticks out there, they actually have twist to yaw on there, so they have three axes. The Hotus Warthog is actually lacking that, but the lack of twist does allow the stick to be that much more precise and that much more sensitive. But if like me the rudder is an essential part of your playstyle, you may well struggle with it just like I have. Now a lot of people out there who already have this HOTUS may well have some flight pedals as well but that is an additional expense and requires an additional room as well. Not to mention there's other factors to consider when using flight pedals. Something I've so far tried to avoid. Now on the throttle there's a little nipple on the rear of it that is analogue and it's also very sensitive and it's this that I've been using to control the ship's yaw. It does work but it takes a bit of getting used to. Now there's two other options you can use with Elite and I've only actually just started trying them but they do seem to be much better. The first is roll to yaw where when you use the roll on the stick it actually yaws for the first part of the uh, motion and then goes into a roll. There's actually a third option and that's to use the game control settings to bind the toggle switch which allows you to toggle between your and roll on the x-axis and that actually works really well because what it does is swaps out the control bindings so for example with the toggle off you've got roll on the x-axis on the stick and your on the throttle and with the toggle on you then get the your on the stick and the roll on the throttle so the ability to swap out controls like this really does make up for the lack of the twist to your on the stick but even without that this stick is really good it's in a complete class of its own and it's really not comparable to either the X52 or the X55. This is significantly better all round. Now the build of the throttle is actually slightly different. It does have a metal base, it's very heavy and all the switches on it are very very good quality. The little flip switches you can see there do have two types of them. Some of them are just toggle switches so you just press them and they flick back in position again. The others are on off switches so they stay in the position you move them to. To the very far right of the throttle there you can see a little lever there. That is another axis and by default that is bound to the radar on the game. Giving you some very fine control over the zoom on it. The additional axis is very welcome and can actually be bound to anything else as well. The throttle itself can actually be split so that you can physically use it either as a single axis or two separate individual axes. There's also a dial at the front of the throttle allowing you to increase or decrease the torque on the throttle. Combined with all the point of view hats on the throttle, as long with all the switches, there really shouldn't be any reason you need to take your hands off the throttle and use the keyboard at all. As I mentioned earlier, there is some give in the throttle. You can actually move it from side to side a little bit, and that does give it the impression of slightly weakness or perhaps a slightly lower build quality in the terms of the beam coming from the base to the top of the throttle. I'm also not a big fan of the shape of the top of the throttle itself. I do appreciate that uh, Thrustmaster are a bit limited in how they can shape this because after all it is an Air Force replica but nonetheless I don't find it all that comfy. But that is also in large part probably because I've got it situated on a table so I have to kind of reach up to it. A lot of people mount these to the side of their chairs and therefore have it a lot lower down while well, I'm sure it will be a lot more comfy. I do actually prefer the feel of the X55 throttle and I also feel that the X55 one does have a slightly better motion on the throttle axis. That said the Hotus Warthog throttle does undeniably have a much better build and also a lot more functionality on it. So overall what do I feel about this Hotus? Well, I can't argue the build quality at all, especially on the stick, which is basically irreplaceable for me now. The throttle I do really like, but like I said, I do prefer the X55 one just a little bit in terms of how it feels. 
Now this HOTUS is pretty expensive. It's listed around about the 260 to 270 pound price mark on most online retailers and is actually listed at 370 pound directly from Thrustmaster. So it's significantly more expensive than the X55 which can be got for around about 130 to 150 pound and the X52 which is around about 100 pound. But for the extra money you're getting a setup that is far superior in build quality and also much better in terms of functionality. And I had the chance to try out this HOTA setup two years ago, I would have purchased it without any question. Nowadays I play Elite pretty much exclusively, so I'm using this stick a heck of a lot. And if like me you're going to be using the HOTUS a lot, then you're not going to be disappointed with it. Even more so if you're going to use it with another game like DCS World. But with a purchase like this, you just can't make it without factoring in the cost of it. And to be perfectly honest, you're going to get just as much functionality, more or less, from an X52, albeit that would have a lot less switches on it and you may find yourself still using the keyboard a bit. But what you're paying for here is, like I say, the build quality and the experience of using something that really does feel great. If the price is a bit of a factor, then you might want to look elsewhere for an alternative HOTUS. But if you're looking for the premium setup, then the HOTUS Warthog comes highly recommended from me. As always, thanks for watching, and I'll catch you guys and girls next time. Hi guys and girls, I'm Obsidian Ant, and welcome back to Exploring Elite Dangerous Episode 43. Touring the galaxy has enabled me to see all manner of planets and landscapes. This one in particular had some absolutely stunning canyons and gorges, which you got to see in one of my Distant Worlds expedition videos. This, however, is an area that I didn't get to show you, and that was slightly out of the impact crater there with its canyons and various mountains. I discovered this Martian-esque ridge, which provides a stunning vista.